Hi, I'm Robbie, creative technologist at Building 61. In this Shop 61 video, I'm going to cover some of the basics of how we talk about a board, how wood grain relates to the look and behavior of a board, and how we refer to the different directions a board can be cut. Understanding these terms and properties will help with communicating and executing your ideas successfully. Future videos will use the terminology and concepts from this video heavily, so especially if you are new to woodworking, please pay very close attention, even if things get a little dry and granular. Cut. What? First, I'm going to talk about wood grain, the dimensions of a board, and the names of the different surfaces of a board. Then I'll briefly go over how we get from a tree to lumber that is ready to be used successfully in a project. Next I'll explain why knowing where a board comes from within a tree gives us information about how a board will behave and how the grain will look. And finally I'll go over the different directions a board can be cut and specifically what those cuts are called. How do we talk about a board? Here we have two boards. Most often the grain of a board runs from end to end in the longest direction, as is the case with these examples. Think of wood grain as bundled straws that water moved through from the roots to the leaves. The grain on the ends of a board is called end grain. End grain is the most porous part of a board, like the ends of the straws. If you see a tree's growth rings, you are looking at end grain. The grain on the sides of a board is called side grain. Side grain can be thought of as the sides of the straws. Side grain is far less porous than end grain. There are three dimensions to a board, and the names of these three dimensions are often confused. The dimension of a board, with the grain, is its length. The wider dimension of a board, which is perpendicular to its length, is its width. The narrower dimension is its thickness. The surfaces of a board also have specific names. The wider surface with side grain is called a face. A board has two faces. The narrower surface with side grain is called an edge. A board has two edges. The end of a board, unsurprisingly, is called an end. A board has two ends. Here we have a tree from which lumber could be cut. Much of commercially produced lumber comes from the straight section of a tree trunk. A tree that has recently been cut down will have a lot of moisture in it. In most cases, wood needs to be dry before it can be used for woodworking. Wood can be air dried, which takes roughly a year per inch of thickness, or it can be dried in a wood drying oven called a kiln, which is much faster than air drying. Wood shrinks as it dries, whether it's air dried or kiln dried. If a log is dried without being milled first, it will develop severe cracks, because as wood dries, it shrinks substantially more in its circumference than it does in its radius so it will eventually split all the way to the very center of the log, which is called the pith. If a board includes the pith, it is already cracked, or it will be before long. Boards that include the pith, or wood near the pith, are not stable and should be avoided when at all possible. The most efficient and common strategy for milling a log prior to drying is called through sawing. Through sawing is milling a log in parallel cuts from end to end. When the slabs from this process are then cut into narrower boards, the resulting boards fall into three categories. If a board's faces are close to parallel to the tree's growth rings, it's called plain sawn. If a board's faces are nearly perpendicular to the tree's growth rings, this is called quarter sawn. Falling right between plain sawn and quarter sawn is rift sawn. 
which has growth rings running roughly diagonally through the board. So what we end up having are straight lines cutting through concentric circles. So these categories are general and boards will often not fall cleanly into just one category. If we look at the end grain of the highlighted board and we assess the growth rings relative to the faces going from left to right, we start with quarter sawn, then shift into rift sawn, then into plane sawn, back to rift, and then back to quarter sawn. So why do we care how a board is sawn? A plane sawn, a rift sawn, and a quarter sawn board will behave differently from each other and look different as well. Understanding these distinctions will help in choosing a board that will look and function the best for its use. Let's talk more about the three board categories, this time with the log peel back so we can see the side grain of the boards. The face of a plane sawn board has grain that is open and often has a distinct so-called cathedral pattern. Notice that the edge grain is tighter than the face. The face of a quarter sawn board has grain that forms tight parallel lines, with grain much tighter than that of plane sawn. Notice that the edge grain is much more open than that of the face. The face of a rift sawn board has grain that falls somewhere between plane and quarter sawn. In this example, the faces and edges would measure the same, and the grain on all four sides would look very similar. This is sometimes desirable, as in a table leg. Here we have two boards that are dry and have the same dimensions. The left board is quarter sawn, and the right board is plane sawn. If the environment the boards are in becomes more humid, the boards will expand. If the environment becomes more dry, the boards will contract. In many species of wood, the expansion and contraction of the width of a plane sawn board is as much as twice that of a quarter sawn board. And likewise, the thickness of a board will expand and contract as humidity levels rise and fall up to twice as much with a quarter sawn board. The length, however, does not change with fluctuations in humidity. If you remember one thing from this video, it should be that the width and the thickness of wood expands and contracts, and the length does not. A very high percentage of the time, if a piece of furniture cracks, it is because this was ignored. Either that or a board has a pit in it. If this example board is sawn in parallels to the tangent of the growth rings, it will yield plane sawn boards. If the same board is instead sawn perpendicularly to the growth rings, the result is quarter sawn boards. A dead on quarter sawn board will have plane sawn grain on its edges. A dead on plane sawn board will have quarter sawn grain on its edges. Similar to how specific terms are used for how a board's face relates to a tree's growth rings, there are specific terms used when breaking a board down further. If we cut a board perpendicularly to its length into shorter boards, it's called a crosscut. If we cut a board long ways into narrower boards, it's called a rip cut. A rip cut that specifically divides a board's thickness instead of its width is called a resaw. Cutting a board at an angle, as is done for picture frames, is called a miter cut. Miter cuts are often 45 degrees, but other angles are also referred to as miter cuts. Thank you for watching this video. To see more of our videos, check out our YouTube channel. For more information about Shop 61 and Building 61 in general, go to bldg61.org. Hope to see you soon.